I'm meteorologist Bill Martin. I've been doing weather a long time in the state of California. And one of the things we're going to talk about today, I usually do a weather forecast um, for the West Coast of the United States, California specifically. And there's not a lot going on right now. It's a Sunday afternoon. Football's on. Niners got their fannies kicked yesterday. And now we're talking about water. And we're talking about kind of something we doesn't get talked about a lot. And that is the idea that even though we're doing great for water, like all the, I'm going to show you a bunch of, a bunch of indexes and they're going to show you how well we're doing. But then beneath that, we're going to go a little deeper and look at snowpack and, and just chat about aquifers a little bit and how important all this is to California. So the other day, the drought monitor came out and said, Hey, California droughts over. It's never over. It's uh, it's a drought climate. Mediterranean climate is defined by wet winter drought dry summer and that's a long period and so we always are going to have periods of dry drought conditions um the aquifers are decades from recovering those are the groundwater areas in the central valley from redding all the way south to uh, bakersfield there's like 500 different little aquifers but they add up to this giant reservoir of water which has been depleted now for decades upon decades and so I'm never going to be happy until, and I'll never say we're, I just don't think we're ever out of a drought. It, truthfully, I think that's the, the key. We're never not going to have earthquakes in California. We're, we're never not going to have droughts. It's, it's the history of the state. So when we look at water, it's not just like the drought monitor that, that, that they use. I think it's basically ubiquitous for the United States. They use the same um, metrics to measure how we, if we're in drought or out of drought that they'd use for other states like you know Denver or Texas it doesn't work this way if you were to do it this way you would say yeah the, 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 the drought monitor says we're all good well we're not because the snowpack is way down because the warm water that came in on those atmospheric rivers melted a lot of the early season snow or it never fell as snow at all and ran out and wasn't able to be captured in the reservoirs and so we're going to take a quick look and um one of the things I'll, I'll say is when you look at rainfall percents of average this is this year you see you know 204 percent 128 percent it looks pretty good i mean there's some lower uh, amounts in there but overall California rainfall, even down into Southern California. Remember LA, you guys got ridiculous amounts of rain. And that's one of the reasons we had such a, um, a break when last week and the week before you had Santa Ana wind conditions that would have been red flag warnings, but because of the moisture, because of, you know, 300% of rainfall average in Santa Barbara, you didn't have that. So at first blush, you go, okay, we're, everybody's doing great for rainfall, right? Well, rainfall isn't the only thing. The snow is what matters the most. So when you look at California in a wa dynamic water setting, you've got surface reservoirs. It mainly, it's all about Mount Sh Lake Shasta and Lake Orville. So those are basically your checking accounts. You can that you got you know, you you, you, you can pull water from those because there's a pretty consistently filling up. The snowpack is more like your savings account. And that has, and if that's not the savings isn't built up, your checking account suffers, right? The aquifer, we won't even talk about that because the aquifer is like where you live. It's your, it's your life's blood. But we can't really, you know, we we're not really impacting the aquifer. We um, we need to have multiple storms to come in over the over multiple decades to get the aquifers back. But the surface reservoirs and the snow matter. And the snow is basically your savings account. And our savings account right now, the Northern Sierra, let's see if I can dig it up here. The Northern Sierra is showing 28% to 58% of normal today of, of snowfall. That's not good. So that's Lake Shasta. That's Lake Shasta and in, 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 a, in a bit of Lake Orville. So up here, Savings account not looking good. Central Sierra, which is Sierra Nevada or Lake Tahoe in those areas, 38% to 77% of average. And then you go down to uh, Southern California, Southern Sierra, you're 97%. So 58%, 70%, and 98%. That's down towards Mammoth Mountain. It sounds pretty good, but we are more than halfway through... Um, more than halfway through January, and we've got a lot. We've got a lot of rainy season yet to come, 
but the snow is suffering. And so this is rainfall, this is a rain, snowfall water equivalent. So this is how much water is wrapped up in the snow. And that's, you know, inches. So 4.2 inches up around McLeod or Bernie, six inches on average a foot of, of rain, which is, is not, it's nothing to sneeze at, but it's not what you want to see this time of year. So more just caution. I just think when we talk about water, we're doing good. We're doing good. Snowfall's not doing so well. Um, but, and we still have time to catch up on it. But you kind of have to look at these various touch points, and the touch points being the aquifer, the surface reservoirs, and the snow. So these are percents of average snowfall and the mountains. And you can see there's, you know, Lake Tahoe's 60%. Those reds represent 50 to 60%. The oranges represent 70-some percent. And as we get down the road here, we're going to have pretty good opportunities for more snow events. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you're never certain about weather, but we'll have more opportunity for more snow events. But you really need the uh, snow in the mountains. And we've uh, right now, well, I'll show you. So this is Lake Shasta. This is the eight station index. This is the report card, if you will, Ham. Oh, coffee. This is the report card for how we're doing in the watersheds. It picks up snowmelt runoff, picks up uh, soil moisture, and picks up rainfall. And so the blue area in here, this area right here, see that blue line that kind of curves up, this shaded blue. So that's, that's average. That's where we should be. These are extreme years. So when you get up here, this was that 2017, 2016, 2017 year, a very wet year. This was that 1982 El Nino. And you can see we started off gangbusters this year. So we're right here. We're this blue line. This is current. So we're not far from the, we're not far from the 82 El Nino in the wettest year ever. But we are trending more towards normal now and coming back into this group. You can see these these dry months here where it's just flatlining and not going vertical. The verticals represent rainy period. And then this flatline means it hasn't rained in a while. And we're not going to see rain for a little while. So we're getting closer to the average, which is fine. So first blush, eight station index, doing well, 140% of average for this time of year. 140% of average for the north, the the, um, the eight station index. Then you go further south, matters not as much. They are at uh, 127% of average. That is the southern report card for water. But again, not taking into account snowfall, the ice chunk that's it's up there. So the, our savings account up there is really diminished. Our checking account, we're flush, right? So, and again, you can see that the, the dry periods, when it's not going vertical, you can see the very wet periods here. They all cluster together. It's amazing the big, how many, the, the big years are big, right? But when you get down here, the average, we're much closer to average in Southern California. But again, still 127% of rainfall average. So the drought monitor, the folks in, in, in LA or, or Washington or wherever they do the drought monitor are going, hey, you guys are solid, man. You guys got tons of rain. That's what they're, they're counting, they're, they're, they're looking at, but they're not looking at the snow and they're not looking at the aquifers. This was Mount Lake Shasta a few years back and Lake Shasta has been releasing water. Let's take a look. This is Lake Shasta. It is 81% full, but you see that we've been releasing water for some time now, certainly for the last week or so, and it's all the way down. Now, they're doing that differently than they, like Lake Orville, they're not doing that. So Lake Shasta is Central Valley Project, so it's federal, um, and so they have different requirements. It's flood control. It's downstream needs. It's taking the pressure on and off local tributaries. So this is, you know, it's run by a separate entity. The next one I'm going to show you is Lake Orville. And Lake Orville is run by the state. Yeah, Department of Water Resources, the state. And they have not been really, they started releasing water early, but the last few days they've kind of backed off of it. Um, and let's see if we can pick that up for you here. So you can see, right, so they're, they're actually letting it fill again. They did drop a little bit of water back a couple days ago. You can see that little notch. 
Um, but they, they haven't been letting water out for a while. So it's because there's two separate entities. And then, of course, the ski industry, um, they are doing pretty well. But, you know, you can even see for this time of year, you expect a lot more snow up in the mountains. So what we're talking about here is the realities of California water, which is one agency says, hey, you guys are crushing it. You guys got all the water you need, but not taking into account the fact that the aquifers are drained way down and not taking into account the um, the snow in the mountains. And so you, you get completely different. So as a Californian, if you're watching this, you're pretty much all all in on California, right? Because you, you, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a very complex place. And drought, you know, droughts in this state, I mention it all the time, and people kind of, some people don't, don't buy it, but it's true. There have been droughts in the state of California in ancient times, before Europeans, uh, that lasted 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, droughts. Uh, at one point, there were 300 native tribes in the central valley in the in the valley or in the, the state of california 300 tribes that's more and where'd they go right i think i know where they went i think you're getting get in one of these 50 100 year droughts they go somewhere else so it's a climatology i was i knew i was an undergraduate was climatology um emphasis so i, I know i know just enough to be dangerous but it, it that happens so it turns on it turns off and when it turns on, we can't freak out. And when it turns off, we got to go, oh, we should, you know. And so this takes me to my next point, conserving. I don't know why we don't do this as a state. I do know why, actually, because of money. But we need to conserve. We need to have, like, stringent rules. Like, this is how much water everybody can use every day. This is how much water can be used for cash crops in certain areas. Because there's a lot of deals that got made with the federal government and, you know, again, two, you got state and federal working these giant reservoirs that are feeding farmers that are getting, some are getting subsidies, right? Many are, some are. It's, yeah, and I tried at one point, I tried to understand water resource or water rights, and it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. There's too much. Um, but so I guess what I'm getting at is we should be all held to a, a, a standard in terms of water usage, how much you use. In Australia, they do that. I've mentioned that before. And I can't remember what their number is, but come up with a number that's manageable because we, we, we're in a wet period now, but we won't be eventually. We'll go back into a very dry period. And we're kind of, we, this that could happen this year, quite funky, it could shut off. So just be aware of where you live. And uh, at some point, there will be, somebody will go, hey, somebody in government, maybe a new governor, will say we should really ration, not ration, we should really know what our water footprint is that's better know what our water footprint is okay so in terms of water what did i just say report card water that's flowing is uh, is an a a maybe even an a plus let's call it an a but the water that matters the house the aquifers and the checking account or the savings account the snow in the mountains isn't really there right now certainly the, the snow in the mountains so what we need is some big storms and hopefully we'll see them i'll see you back here tomorrow with it's uh monday so we'll be doing a full forecast see you back here